We're here for the next in the series of interviews celebrating 10 years of synesthesia. Today's theme is disruptive technology, and I'm going to be speaking with Di Deputy Media Director and Head of News for the European Broadcasting U Union, Liz Corbyn. Liz, you're in Switzerland now, but your role has, has taken you, if not around the world in, in your working capacity, then certainly working in the international field of news. Um, you've worked in the news field for over 20 years, I think. Um, <laughs> and we're here today to talk about how the changes that you've seen in your professional field, how they've been affected by those simultaneous changes in technology. Um, you know, in 20 years, there are so many examples that I can pull out, but, you know, we've gone from those really now very retro cool handsets that you go like that on and have to put the aerial and we've all got, um, we've all got smartphones. Now, so much has changed and the thing we're intrigued to find out today is how that's affected this field of news and news reporting. So um, I hope you've got lots of juicy anecdotes ready for us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> many. It's been, a, it's been a huge change over the last 20 years, I agree. You know, you talk about uh, the handsets we were using, but we really, were, we were just using them to, to call people on. And, you know, we were filming on tape um, and, uh, and and cutting on tape. And, and now, of course, everything's digital. And now all of the platforms you can get your news on has completely changed. So, yes, it's been, it, it, when you put it like that, it has been uh, an immense change over the years. Yeah, literally when you said that about cutting on tape, I had a black and white image in my head, um, so, <laughs> which is a bit exaggerated, <laughs> it's a bit exaggerated, um, but uh, nevertheless, um, yeah, remarkable. So let's start with this. In those 20 years, in your experience, what's changed about how you find out about news stories? That's, that's really where I'd like us to start. Absolutely. So I've always worked in broadcast news to start with. So um, the vast majority of which has been in television, um, but more recently um, also in um, digital and online news. <clears throat> and, um, you know, when I started, the way you found out about things was local newspapers would have, would often be the first with the story. And that would be in a printed edition of the newspaper. Um, and maybe that would work through to the local television and radio stations. And then um, national outlets would, would also um, uh, get onto the story. Um, you know, not only was that a kind of 24 hour or in some cases weekly news cycle, um, it's now, of course, completely different in, in terms of uh, how and when you can find out about news. Um, from the broadcast point of view, um, the evening television news bulletins still hugely important in, in most and the majority of countries, um, but are no by no means the only um, time that people consume news. Um, and people want updates on things quicker. They uh, set all sorts of alerts on their phone. They get their news from all sorts of different platforms and different sources. Um, and yes, we can talk about this a lot, but it, it's, it's, it has massively changed how we do journalism and how audiences um, consume news and where they get it from. One of the things you said then was about how it's changed how people have consumed news. I'm gonna use the word competition there, um, you, yeah. well, you work in a, a public service environment, but I mean, use the word competition there. How has it changed the nature of competition for you, um, these, you know, the well, disruptive technology? Public, public service media obviously has, has a huge number of competitors and that has, has only expanded uh, in recent years with, with that more direct access to audiences. So um, some people will describe the media as a filter of news. I would prefer to describe it as a curator of news uh, and, and a place where you can, you can trust um, uh, the news that you're consuming. But the fact is you can get um, news and information um, from a very, very wide variety of sources. With this information and the way um, information in general spreads, um, audiences have access to all sorts of information. Not all of it is trustworthy. So it is important stuff that's going around on on, on mobile platforms on uh, on the internet is is important in the in the whole of the news industry um, because what audiences consume uh, matters to journalists um, and matters to to us in terms of the way that we serve audiences with quality news content. So to understand from that Manila correspondent what this fake news is that's going around in in the Philippines at the moment is really, really important. 
Uh, it used to be the fact that, you know, you would never you would never call in with that. You would just ignore it because you discovered that this information wasn't true. But now that's that's changed and we have to deal with that sort of content um, and help audiences through the huge amount of information that's out there. So you said before that you prefer to see the news outlet as a curator of news. Perhaps it's almost more accurate to say that you like to see it as a responsible curator of news, really the place where if you want to know what's true, let's leave disinformation at the door, this is where you come to. Exactly. So, um, you know, some people feel, oh, well, I, can get, I can get this unfiltered information um, because I can go on Twitter, I can go on Facebook and I can see it from the, the real sources and, you know, I can make my own decision about what's true. Um, actually, we discover that all the, in all of the research that's also been done around this is actually people really appreciate um, quality, trusted news organisations to curate content for them so that um, they can consume which bits of it they want to and in the format and on the platform they want to. But the fact is that somebody has taken a second look at it and worked out whether it is, in fact, reliable and worthy of of, of your consumption of your time because um I, I i've often told my teams um in various um uh, in various places that i've worked um that news is in many ways a form of entertainment it is you know the competition that you have for consuming news is now very different so it used to be oh well the news is on at six o'clock or seven o'clock or whatever and your option was to switch over to another channel at that time but now on your phone you've got social media platforms or music or gaming or or um, uh, Netflix or another streaming provider. You know, the, the, the competition to news is huge. So I feel like we as journalists have a responsibility to make that news as attractive as, a, as possible because the competition to people consuming news at all is really high. 